comment on um, on that my vote. It's closed for registering. It closed on October 16th because we are now in what's called the late period of registration. So if anybody needs to register, change your name, change your address, you have to do it in person with your municipal clerk. And that closes Friday, this Friday at 5 p.m. And if you miss that date, you can register on the day of election. But open registration, and that's part of this, my vote, closed on October 16th. People so still, if people go on there and try to register, they might get it through, but then it sits there pending. They won't be registered. And I've had that happen where I've gone in to the whistle because I'm a clerk, mm -hmm. and I've seen their name there, and I can't do nothing about it. Except if I could call them and say, you're not registered. You have to come to me personally or wait till the day of the election. So... People don't know that they got somebody out there that wants to register yet. That yeah, it won't happen on my vote because it's closed. For that. On the earlier referendum, they had uh, the state was going to give you three hundred fifty thousand dollars if that referendum passed. Besides what the referendum was. Is that still out there as far as this referendum where they're trying to push the referendums by giving you more money to do it? Yeah, uh, well, that would be that 30%. So for this referendum, it's, it's that one, the number is one million one, right? And 30% of that is what would come back from the state. So that's the comparable, the same number as before when we were working with the numbers of million two fifty and at that time I think the number was a little higher than thirty percent because the aid formula was a little bit higher. Now we have a lower state aid number so we're we had to drop that down to thirty percent. So yes. So that means out of the one million one, seven hundred and seventy thousand would go on the tax roll and the and the difference was is coming from state aid. And that would bring that tax rate from two sixty down to the one eighty. And the three hundred and fifty thousand reoccurring goes on forever. Oh, that three fifty from back in uh, twenty fourteen. That's a yeah, part of the. Um, yeah, that is part of that line eleven that we were looking back at. That three fifty is a referendum that was passed back in twenty fourteen, I believe. So that kicked us up three hundred fifty thousand above. What the state said you are supposed yeah, to do. Yeah, that was, that. that's right. That increased line 11 by 350,000, and it, it does it once and it stays there. It doesn't increase every year, it just does it once, but it stays there mm -hmm. as part of the formula. So it doesn't go away. Like a non recurring, like this one, after three years, it completely goes away, so it comes out of the revenue limit. What was the third year tax that you were talking about to? You never did mention what the third year was. Well, the third year, the reason, I'm doing both of the calculations based off of the 24 equalized value. So because that's not absolute. Yeah, for the second and the third year, I don't know what the values are. I'm just using the 24 value because if values increase, it's going to be the same property with a higher uh, value, but then the tax rate will go down. But the amount of taxes is going to work out to be the same. So if, if valuation goes up, the tax rate comes down because it's a calculation of how many dollars go into the valuation. So it gives you the same answer in terms of taxes. But, but the referendums kick it back up. The referendum kicks it up to the first year by that 260. Mm -hmm. The second year and the years after that, it would be second, third, and fourth year, it would be down to the 180 because you're going to be getting that 30% aid in year two, three, and four. Even though year four, your referendum is gone, you're still going to get the aid for it one year late. Because the formula is one year behind. So the 180 is, applies then to years two, three, and four. 
just seems to me like this whole thing goes back to creating a better budget. Because well, the government isn't going to help us. So we can't keep kicking out money and kicking out money forever. Well, your options are as we went through. I mean, it's, it's it, without a referendum, you see the type of things that the district has to deal with. With a referendum, you see the type of things that the district would use it for. I mean, that's basically the analysis. The district is limited, as I showed you, line 11 for nine years. The average increase is about $45,000 a year. So whatever the expenses were nine years ago, we are allowed $45,000 a year for nine years on average between those years. That's, that's, that's it. That's how much revenue the district is allowed. It's capped. The only thing you can do is cut expenses, and, and cutting expenses means all the things that we went through. When was the last time your staff had a raise? Uh, not this year, but the year before. What was it? Four and a half? Uh, that, was, that was three years ago. Uh, so they had a raise three years ago? Yeah. And last year? In, yes. But you're not sure of the percentage last year? I'm not. I, I, I can certainly get that to you. Obviously, it's important and it's somewhere. Um, yeah. And, and generally... So probably a couple of percent. Yes, and, and, and what what is typically tried to be done and has been tried to be done for going back to when they, you know, going back to unions when unions used to negotiate it. But a couple of things that, that has happened since unions is obviously districts don't have to go to what the CPI is. Um, and, and I don't know if our district has ever gone above CPI. There has been a few times that we've been below CPI, um, which is just the inflationary, the, the consumer price index. So. We, we generally don't travel too far away from CPI, um, but we have been under CPI. I don't know if we've ever been over CPI, but I can get you that that number was um, for sure as far as what the races were this year now. How about putting on the internet a breakdown of what actually teachers make gross and other people in the school? Because we have no idea what you're paying anybody. That's that's that, that's a public, I mean, oh, oh, open to, open records request. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I open records request last week, and that was a joke. Who'd you do it to? Why Lucy Township? Oh well, I, <laughs> we will respond to that open records request. Yeah. Yeah. If you understand exactly what goes into the total cost of a teacher, the salary. The uh, DPI has that. Huh? The DPI has that on there. You okay. just got to know how to find it. Right. But I mean, they'll get the school district and yeah, are we teacher paying our teachers a gross of about 130, 150? Oh. What are we oh, paying? Oh, Lord, I don't think so. Because they're getting some, they're getting 80 plus all the benefits and everything. Yeah, they can't be a teacher if you're going to take that much. Um, I, I, I think the highest teacher said. <coughs> Upper 60s, lower 70s is our highest teacher, our lowest teachers down That's to. That's just their salary. Salary, and I, right. But the benefits could be huge. About 25. Could be. It's usually around 20. About 20, yeah, 20 to 25,000. Um, if they take family, you know, I guess benefits. But we also have teachers that are making 39,500. They're taking a single insurance package because they're not married. So. But anyway, yeah, that is all public information. I, I, if, you know, I, they gave me all that information before. I had no, where, no idea how to dig through and find it. Oh, you well, can just ask them. Yeah, them. I, he can yeah. print it off. Yeah, I, I, can you go we'll back to his question about oh, building a better budget and cutting things? I, if you just know to make sure everybody understands that if off. we cut those things, if we yeah. drop our expenditures, that also drops our aid. Is that correct? Yes, you're, you're aided on your expenditures, correct? So then we just have to try to recoup the next year for the less aid that we got, correct? Well, again, you're going to be restricted by that revenue limit. It's just that the limit, as I said, the, the revenue limit determines how much money you get. The aid portion, if you get less aid, taxes go up. So, I mean, it's not... 
You know, it seems it seems hard to understand why that would happen, but yes, if you don't so have the expenditures impact. and you have less aid, you're going to still see taxes go up, but it doesn't mean that the district is receiving more money. Right. No, but yeah. A balanced budget's always, in, in reality, in life, we got to budget ourselves if we don't work well. Agreed. And, yeah. I might. and if you don't budget yourself, we're still broke. I, I, I'm just going to stand up here and say, you're, you're at, we, we can have a balanced budget, but we, we lost a pretty, I, I think, a, a very impactful list of people and other things that impact our students. Um, we're going to have to keep doing that. It's not a, a lot. It's not, it's not anybody's surprise that staffing is 80% of our costs. But I also know that staffing is what impacts students' educational experiences, and I think that as a board, and definitely me, I'm not going to speak for the board, I'm going to speak as an administrator, I'm up here trying to be able to give every student that sets foot in this building the best educational experience possible. And I know that I can't do that with less. I know I can't. It's not an option. So I, I get what you're saying. And, and the option would be, if we're going to balance budget every single year with what we got, we are going to start losing experiences for kids. And that's all I'm saying. We need to go back to the state. We need to make it hard knocks to them that they cannot keep operating like they are. 100? I'm behind you there. Absolutely. Everybody needs to roll a pair and go out with the students and start making it. Well, let's call the elections. There's an election in November. I mean, the November 5th. Is that people on there? They're involved. Tall. Big time. So Mark Lyon sent, <clears throat> sent me a letter. Thank you. Mark Lyon sent me a letter for thanking me. <laughs> Is that all you got? <laughs> he's, he's, he's the only one that's really got back to you. Did you frame that, Jeff? Did you frame that? <laughs> no, I'm still laying on my counter. No, no, Carol, you, you said as municipalities, our equated value goes up. And I have seen that really happening in the last for five years. And um, so you said as that goes up, our state aid goes down because yeah. our value. Yeah, because the state aid formula is based on the premise that if you have more value, you need less help from the state. You have more value to tax. That's the premise of the aid formula. And just to let some of you know, clerks, we get an equalized value report every year. In fact, we get two. One's uh, sample and one is uh, the finalized. And everybody has gone up. Wilmington Township, we went from 48 to 58,000. A million, I'm sorry. Million. Million. <laughs> we went up 10 million just this last year from 23 yeah, to 24. We had a revaluation. That's when we're going to see you know, your assessments go up is an a, a evaluation. We just had one. We were in compliance for two years. And because of the Department of Revenue's increase in our equated value, we were out within two years. Normally, mm -hmm. we went we went 12 years without an evaluation. So why are you losing? Now they just jumped it over. And we lost, we, we, we lost compliance within two years. Tunnel violation, you were probably um, out of compliance for a number of years. You have six years. We are the same way. We, are, we were required to do a reevaluation by this year, 2024. Otherwise, the state is going to come in and do it for us, which is going to cost a lot more. Um, yes, but, yeah. but when we did it, exactly the same as why we were saying, when my house went up more than double. Like, this Timberland isn't worth nothing. Not unless you have walnut trees, and they still ain't work. Call the equity value office and argue that with them, and I know I'm going to work with them. But anyway. Claire, um, Carol, I got a question I just want you to explain a little bit more on. Your uh, slide on the facilities, buildings, and maintenance fund? Yes. Where we're not going to be putting the money that we had designated for that? Mm -hmm. You were talking mainly about being for building projects. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's also looking to cover anything that, 
like a boiler that breaks down a gym, a water heater, or a rooftop unit? Yes, it's, not, it's, it's okay. I just issue. want to make sure that's known that that's not just going to go to building projects. That's no, going to it's go parking lot maintenance. Anything, anything that breaks anything down within the city. It's called a capital, capital Improvements Project. In order to establish that, you have to create a capital improvements plan. And capital improvements means just that. It could be a boiler, it could be parking lots, it could be whatever falls under the category of capital improvements. I just want to make sure the station. Yes, yes, absolutely. Mind that valuation chart is in there. Yeah. So what Jane, when Jane said Bloomington went up $10 million, yeah, it's, well, it's regular. Yeah. Mm -hmm. really and some of them went up worse than that. Yeah. I went through the same math before I came here tonight. Yeah. I, went, I checked every single one, and I printed off the Department of Revenue's sheet mm -hmm. that shows how much of that was for new construction and how much of that was for economic change. And the amount of new construction, if you're lucky, is 1%. Mm -hmm. So if you're over 20% change, and one percent is only due to something that was built. The rest of it is just the same property owner with a higher value. And you get that from sales. Yeah, from sales. From sales. Sales of the property. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then the, and then the local assessors have to come in and mm -hmm. assess your property and bring it up to that equalized value. That's what they're tasked with. When we're out of compliance. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. And when they go up twenty percent in one year, that's it knocks you right back out of compliance. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're seeing right now. Yeah. You made a comment about seeing somebody want to learn a foreign language. Yeah. And some individual responsibility on their part, rather than us having to hire another teacher. I mean, is that a possibility? So the way that we do those courses, um, what happens is, they sign an agreement at the beginning of that course. If they pass the course, the district pays for it. If they fail the course and they vomit, they have to reimburse the district back. Okay. So that's the way we handle some of those courses, especially like a, like a foreign language that isn't required and it's not anything that's governed by the, by the state statute laws. Um, but like that course, if they pass it and they, they, they bust it and they do well, the district pays for it. If they fail and they vomit, that's on the parents to go ahead and pay us back. I just had a question about, so we're talking like 1.1 million, and on one slide it showed all the different things that you had to cut, like the dollar revenues that were affected by it. One of the things was the building's maintenance fund at $100,000. Is that, I guess I have two <coughs> questions, is that um, something you're just going to continue, or are you going to try and make it up? Are there things that are on the lists that you went through that are definite you're Well, some of the things like the deferred costs, like uh, we can't defer a lot of maintenance costs. Those things are going to have to be taken care of. The technology costs that we deferred, those things are going to have to be taken care of. Um, some of the supplies that we're really kind of like, oh, we're not painting this year. We're going to those type of things. Those things are all things that are going to have to come back. When things get interesting, it's when we're going to have to sit down and figure out what programming we're going to prioritize. Are we going to prioritize the high school English teacher if $1.1 million is enough? If $1.1 million is enough for all of that, then I would say there's a high likelihood that almost all of that would return. If we really start putting it to it and start figuring out how much this is going to cost us with staffing and all of those things, um, then if, if $1.1 million isn't enough, then I, we're going to have to make some decisions on what Pro, what programming would come back? There's a lot of the deferred stuff that has to come back. Do you set a specific amount for like the um, facilities maintenance fund? Uh, I mean, like, is that annually a hundred thousand? This year, we wanted to put a hundred thousand in it if the um, referendum would pass uh, within this budget. I, I, Derek, I don't know if you think he penciled any in there. Derek's our CESA 5 guy who's working on the business side of things. I don't believe he penciled anything in there for this year. So you had said earlier, um, you talked a little bit about the special ed and mental health of our students and our children, which is a huge thing. It's a, it's a huge thing in every school district and every household, and you know, you see it all the time. Um, last year, you we got 
$330,000 as a grant for mental health, right? Um, I'm just kind of curious, and this is just things that I've observed um, over the years is um, for our special ed students, I do believe that the government gives us money for those students, correct? Amen. That's not entirely on taxpayers to, to provide for our special ed students. There's it's, well, I mean, federal. And, I mean, it's federal dollars, but I mean, well, it's, it, we but it's money, it. but it's right. But it's not money that is necessarily applied to with this. To River Ridge. Right, to, to River, River Ridge. Ridge. The money that we get from the government, the, the categorical aid we get from special ed, does not cover all the special ed costs. So there is always a transfer from the general fund into the special ed fund to help compensate for that. So does that does that go along with that? Would that be included? <laughs> With that money that we got with the mental health, is it is it a combined thing? As I guess I'm what I'm trying to it, say is it, it, it's not tied right to the special ed costs, um, but just just so you know, kind of where we are on that is obviously we this is this is kind of our staffing conundrum that we've been trying to figure out. Um, we've been trying to hire an at-risk interventionist um, since the summer, and we cannot find a licensed, qualified individual to come in and, 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 and fulfill that role. Hopeful that uh, after the end of first quarter, we do have an individual that comes in, and he's gonna work across the board. He's gonna work with elementary students, probably on behavioral needs, and he's gonna work with high school students on those students that are credit deficient. Um, and we were also able to get an, an aid that's helping with some behavioral issues on the elementary side to come in there. With any luck, we're gonna have some some uh, counseling or some, some, I'm trying to think of the right Some word. like social emotional coaching type stuff. Social emotional coaching for the kids. So, and that's all been, quite frankly, because it's so hard to find individuals, we, we, we are through a quarter. We've been, since summer, trying to get these positions filled. We're getting really, really close, and I think it's gonna have a huge impact on a lot of different kids. But. But no, I, I'm really excited about that $300,000. I think it's going to make a difference for a lot of kids. Well, I just, was, I just guess I wasn't understanding the, the connection there. And I just, I was hoping that it, that was just for that. Right. And yeah. not getting misused. Yes. Are you wondering if it's going to supplant what was already there? No, I was just curious, like, um, guns, sometimes funds can be distributed. You know, or you can move money around. I just wanted to know whether that three hundred and thirty thousand, whatever it was, was specifically designated for this only, and not being able to. We can't take that money and put it in this pocket because this pocket's short. Or can't move that money around. That that specifically goes to the students for that specific help. Absolutely. Yes. Yep. I have a question. You commented on your 4K pro program that you were all day, right? All day for the 4K. Is the 4K required by the state? Not by statutory retirements. Requirements. And even when it comes to funding, this is another thing if you want to get a hold of your taxpayers. Those kids are 4K, they're in our building every day, all day, and they're only funded at 60%. So if you want to have another thing to throw at the legislators, that'd be one of them, because why does a kid that's in 4K mean any less to us than the kid that's in second grade? We're still supplying the resources to educate that kid. But it's not required? Not statutorily, no, it's not. Not, not required, no. But I don't know if you want to be my kindergarten teacher, um, trying to teach a kindergarten class to all those kids that have not had any school yet. And I do think that we would lose a lot in open enrollment if we didn't have a 4K program. I, I really truly believe that because most of the districts around us do offer the 4K. So I think it's, a, it's almost like a calculated risk type thing if you have it or if you don't have it. But I, I, I think we would probably lose some enrollment. And, and, but yeah, if you're, to your point, it's not statutorily required. 4K is not. So it's kind of a, a bonus to the parents with the Absolutely. But it's, it's not just the parents. It's not the just a bonus to the, the parents. It's, a, it's the bonus for the children, too. They have the interaction. They have the education. They have a routine. 
It so is. that is very important. It definitely sets a very good educational point for them. Yeah. 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 And way, way back decades ago, the preschool program used to be funded through the Title I Chapter One program, yes. but then those funds shrunk over time, mm -hmm. and eventually, when they did start offering equalization aid on 4K programs, that's when we started trying to um, establish. I don't know why they decided those were at 60%. Carol, do you know? I don't know why. It's just that they don't consider them like in, um, in the formula when we talked about putting the full-time students in that revenue limit sheet. If you're in first grade, I believe you're counted as one. But if you're in 4K, you're counted as 0. 0.6. So not even 5K? 5K. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 And, and so that, therefore, when you add up all those children, by counting them that way, that's the number of students you have. They call that a full-time equivalent. And that's what goes into that formula to determine line 11. So that so, is also something that we need to work on the state yeah. legislature about. If, if, if they would just make that change on the revenue limit sheet and say 4K is counted as one, the same as 5K or first grade or whatever, that would help the district in producing line 11. Huh. Yeah. So, it's easier to figure it out, too. I think they do those yeah. things just to make it more complicated. <laughs> I have a question about those who um, open and roll out. So those students, we're getting state aid for them, correct? We get to count them in our line we 11. We have to count them, okay. Yes. So, we ever see where, okay, um, you said that when they open and roll out that we have to pay for them to go? Tuition. Yes. The tuition. Yes. Is there a difference from so the tuition that, that we get and then the tuition that we have to pay out yes. to think, another school? I think you get more for Is Carol saying yes? Yes. Your, so it could cost us more. The rest the district is getting that equalization aid level. So that can okay. be different from school to school. Okay. The so. state sets, unless they've changed anything in the last year, eight years, the state sets an amount per open enrolled student. And um, just an example, Prairie du Chien might have a $10,000 equalization behind each student. The state might set an open enrollment amount of $6,000. Well, they've got 10000 for the student that resides in their district, mm -hmm. but they're attending at River Ridge, so Prairie has to send 6000 of that to River Ridge for that. And that's all done at an end of the year mm -hmm. um, transfer. <coughs> and the DPI tracks all that, and that all gets... So is that oh. something that the, all the school districts around do, and is it something that we mm -hmm. have to pay? Yeah. Yeah. Since yeah. Is, yeah. is it yeah. something yeah. that we have Especially the 
Chuck Brendel comes up great now and say, oh my God, you know, we don't have any other jobs in this area to bring these people back right now. It's tough for this program in the school, you know, and stuff to bring this thing up now. You know, it's, it's, just a, it's a bad general. time. You know. It's just so. tough in general with knowing what's going on in the collection and, and knowing mm -hmm. the taxes and, and the increase obviously you go into the grocery store and everybody's affected by you buy two bags of groceries and it's over a hundred dollars you know and then then the school district no offense don't take offense but is asking for this kind of money that's a lot of money that is a lot of money but i understand now where you know i'd rather have the doors open right but i understand now why i understand now why you you know, I, I get it. I don't want to see them have to get. I think it is a lot of money. Yeah, because you can't have good staff if they're not paying. You can't get students in if we can't offer good things. And I just think we have an awesome thing going up here. And yes, and we got to get it on. There's no more questions. I, I do encourage you and tell people that uh, weren't here tonight, um, this will be uploaded to our website. There's different pieces on our website. Take a look at them. If you have more questions in the meantime. Oh, I forgot to show you. On the very, can you scroll all the way down to the bottom of this page? If, if, I, if I'm so intimidating that people don't want to talk to me, um, go all the way down. Keep going, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. The wheel's not catching Keep going. All right, right here. Okay, so go back up just a little more. Right here. This is on the website, too. Um, and, and I will say that I've answered 100% of the questions that have come in, whether I have the answers immediately or whether I had to find them. Um, all that you do is put your question in there, put your email, email address down below, um, and I will answer the question. I've seen that on another district's website, and I thought it was pretty neat, so I thought I'd give it a go, and actually people do type into it. They do submit questions, so I was like, hey, what a great idea. So if, if you have questions and want to submit that way, submit them that way. I'll let other people know that they can do the same. So thank you all for coming.